Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. We are aware that uh, we are being seen around the globe. We are a, a global company, so, and, and so they are our clients. Here we are. For the first time for the asset optimization, we are in the um, this webinar launched by Ausenco into the Ausenco Connect initiative. We are launching a series of webinars around our knowledge, services, and expertise. We are sharing with uh, experts of uh, Ausenco, our company. And definitely, this is going to be a good one. We are really excited to, to start. We are going to be speaking at, about asset optimization opportunities in challenging times. We all know we are in a pandemic situation. It's been difficult for all of us, for our families, also for businesses. It's time to change, to, to respond quickly about this um, actual changes. Let's go ahead. These are our uh, participants. Here we have like Eric Delorme, who is the North America Asset Optimization Manager. Welcome, Eric. David Ledak, North America Asset Optimization uh, Operations Manager. We do have from Australia, Sergio Ra who is the APAC Africa Asset Optimization Manager, and myself, Jose Cortinat, from Chile, who is the, I am the South America Asset Optimization Business Developer. Eric, welcome to this uh, conference. We are going to be speaking about many things. Please introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your story, your experience, uh, the industries where you have been working, how many years have you been with us in Ausenko? Which are those projects where you are involved? Yeah, hello everyone. So uh, I've been with Ausenko for the last four years. And I really started with Ausenko and the goal was to build the asset optimization group for North America. And uh, I've been uh, in asset management or asset optimization consulting for the last 12 years. And uh, I've been learning a lot about the uh, best practices in terms of asset management in the primary aluminum industry. Uh, I had the chance to work in the past on a, at a site that was recognized as a world-class organization. So it kind of drive my, my path forward on my side for my career. And I really like uh, asset organization from the upfront. And I continue to work in this area for in my entire career. So currently, I'm supporting my, my team of people I have are working on projects. So uh, uh, that's really my role, and it continues to develop the business here across uh, North America. Thank you. Great, Eric. Thank you very much. David, tell us about you. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is David Lezuc, and I've been uh, working with Osenko for almost a year now. Uh, and I'm starting my 20th year in asset management. Before joining the company, I've been running for nine years the asset management division of a major construction company in a dozen of different countries on a fleet that was worth more than 350 million euros. I'm glad to be part of both St. Coast team and uh, be able to, to help people in uh, various industries out there. So uh, again, thanks for being here. Thanks, David. Sergio, welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Sergio Urra. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer from background. I've been working for 15 years in the condition-based monitoring, reliability engineering, maintenance engineering, and asset management, mainly for uh, mining companies in the mining industry. Um, what we, I'm currently the APAC Africa Asset Optimization Manager, and we have projects running with people in different countries in Africa and, of course, in Australia. And I'm very happy to be here with everyone and sort of like try to share a little bit of knowledge and see how the conversation goes. Thanks, Sergio. This is Jose Cortinat. Um, I'm an electronic engineer. I've been working in, in asset management and maintenance for the past 12 years. The first half of my career is working in, in the wind industry, renewable industry, uh, going from one country to another, making commissioning and, and taking care about the operation and maintenance. Now, I'm happy to be in Ausenko um, as a consultant, asset management consultant. I, I went 
to South America, some different countries in Peru. I have been working in Chile, Brazil, uh, South Africa, um, helping people, helping clients, serving, actually, like trying to find the better way of doing it. So let's go, let's jump on into the topic. Okay, the current conversation in the industry, operational continuity. You know, everybody's speaking, we are having so many examples of uh, operations that are actually like closing and, and shutting down because of the actual situation, the COVID-19. However, we do have at the same time other operations which are actually breaking records of production, which is amazing, like uh, even having a main power reduction. So it's really a, a life-changing situation that we are passing. The, the, the industry is really ready to, to absorb new ways of delivering services. Uh, definitely people need to adjust uh, processes, need, need to adjust system need to adjust uh, worries around like logistics. Are we going to get the spurs we, we requested? Uh, did we actually record the spurs? Do we really know the spurs we, are, we will actually need in the, in the in the next year, let's say, or in the, the actual budget period? The other topic is the productivity. Yeah, most of us are working from home. Uh, everything changes. Communication change, you know, the, the, the systems, the methodologies that we are using uh, need to be adjusted. Uh, and surprisingly, we are getting a really good response from our teams, you know. We, we are developing so good and productivity is not actually going down. What do you think, Sergio? What can you tell us about the operational continuity? Uh, what are your clients speaking about? Look, I would say in this region, basically the main concern, of course, is sort of like tightening the budget and do cost reductions. You know, it's, it, there is pressure on the commodity prices, so basically everyone is looking for better ways of using the money. One of the things that you see from that is that people are very mindful about how you do that cost reduction, you know, properly. What is the actual best way of making sure that, yeah, you're cutting costs, but not incurring any major risks, you know? And, and the other thing that it's, it's, it's sort of like key and has changed drastically is because of the, you know, the, the lockdowns and the different logistics situation for teams and all of that, the structure of the teams has changed a little bit and the way that the shifts are running and all of that, you know, it, it has created um, significant differences. Now, what I've seen is that most, most companies are adjusting and, and, and adapting and that's what we want to talk a little bit today about, you know, what things that we think we, we can do better in that space in these times. What about you, you David? What uh, What is your insight around there? Yeah, thanks, Jose. Um, yeah, having resources working from home forced our clients to challenge their employees' roles and responsibilities and reconsider the way that they were managing results and objectives, right? So during COVID-19 period, we have reviewed the RACI chart with our clients and helped them to find the right KPI to measure resources performances. All that making sure that every resource in the department have their objectives aiming toward better overall equipment effectiveness and lower total cost of ownership. For us, pushing in the same direction means having objectives that are aligned and mostly very pragmatic. Also business processes that could be remapped considering the fact that some of the resources are working remotely and could be doing so for a long period of time. You know, following roles and responsibilities redefinition, our clients needed to remap business processes, but by ensuring accountability. You know, defining business process owner became crucial in this time of uncertainty, and companies we work with are forced to review their manpower to be able to cope with current budget and cash flow challenges. It then relied on us to evaluate the value added that every role brings to the table. So that business workflow assessments we have been doing on site in the past three months enabled our clients to review their organizational chart, you know, allowing them to get a clear review of how the efforts needed to be spent. Mm -hmm. Thanks, David. Eric, I know you have been involved in asset integrity uh, assessments remotely. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? 
Yes, if I speak about North America right now, so um, I would say that all our clients have been impacted right now at different levels with the situation with the, uh, the virus right now. So, but for most of our clients, we're able to manage to continue to work remotely. For most of our clients, we have a few people on site, but we, there's a lot of services right now we continue to deliver remotely. And like you said, the first second degree day, again, this is an area where we can have our client taking pictures, videos for us. We can, we can do analysis remotely for that. So, so of course, the scope of the current project we have uh, had to be changed and adapted to the different type of consulting support that is required right now. And um, so, uh, and, and in many cases, uh, we were also the one that proposed our client changes to be made. And for some of them also, we, we took the lead for our client to support them in those changes. So, so that's basically uh, what we're seeing uh, right now. I think it has been a really great surprise for everybody, uh, the reaction that the like, teams had to this actual situation, the way we kept productivity, we kept uh, serving our clients, clients still continue to actually operate, has been a challenge and it's really been really a professionally a great experience for all of us, definitely. Um, let's continue. Okay, yeah, we are in a crisis, it's a global crisis, you know, it's a pandemic. Actual situation is not easy for anybody because it is uncertain how long it's going to take. The markets are feeling it as well. Companies are even like a breaking, you know. But however, we need to think about the mindset. Let's change the mindset and see, uh, and see this as an opportunity. If this would be an opportunity, Sergio, how does that opportunity look like? Yeah, look, it depends on sort of like when, we, when it comes to mining, you know, which commodity are we talking, you know, different commodities behave differently. What we're seeing currently is that the commodities related with infrastructure, you know, are going up and basically that's because most governments will sort of like drive infrastructure projects that need, I don't know, and cover. There was also, you know, a significant increase in the gold price based on, you know, people moving their money to a safe spot like, like the gold. But on the other side, you have commodities like, you know, coal, or oil and gas, you know, that haven't really performed well, and even diamonds. So, so for each of those, there is a different opportunity when it comes to, you know, challenging times and lower, but you know, commodity prices. What you're looking for is usually cost reduction and adjusting productions. And when it comes to, you know, the ones that are doing good, you know, what you're looking for is to actually prepare yourself from for whatever is going to come back and how you ensure basically that your assets will be able to perform and, and, and probably even give more than what they're used to, you know, and all of that needs adjustment you know, to a new reality. Yeah, definitely. What do you think about uh, the situation, David? Is there an opportunity out there for us? Most definitely, um, especially in terms of uh, reviewing the ways that we were doing things. Uh, e either, you know, considering the data that we have, as I was saying, the business processes that we were uh, using, and uh, and to challenge the way that we measure ourselves. To me, it's the perfect time to review our KPIs and make sure that we are all aligned towards the same goals. At the end of the day, we discovered that many of our clients have so many different KPIs, you know, trying to analyze the whole kit and caboodle in different ways. But at the end of the day, are we aiming toward uh, overall equipment effectiveness? And that's the bottom line. So it's a perfect time to um, take a step back and review our ways to measure ourselves. Okay, let's let's challenge our, our audience and ask them, do you see, are you seeing opportunities? Uh, are you taking any action in terms of asset optimization? Uh, I want you to just comment, you know, give your comments there at the end of the of the webinar. We'll have like a 15 minute session for questions and answers. We'll comment and happily comment everything you post. Okay, so where to start? Okay, we are speaking about cost reduction or cost management. Sometimes it, it will not be a cost reduction and you will 
need to invest on, 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 on actually defining a good maintenance plan, maintenance strategy. Definitely, we need to keep an eye on risk management. Risk management is key with this quickly um, operational context changing every day, you know. You know when you are like a, um, having so many changes, uh, risk actually changes as well. So you need to be really quickly adjusting uh, all your activities. We definitely need to focus on, on, on delivering the business plan, okay, and production plan. And that we are going to get it by adjusting our maintenance and actually getting our best of our assets, the asset performance, it's, it's key. And definitely in the maintenance management and maintenance activities, we'll find ways of doing this. What do you think, Eric, about that? Yeah, you're right. So, uh, and like uh, Sergio mentioned earlier, again, the answer to that, to what needs to be done right now, where do we start? So it all depends on the market condition for your business. So for organization where the demand has been greatly reduced, so managing the cost and risk is key for the short term. So you need to look at this and you need to make sure that your business can remain uh, profitable. Okay, and especially we don't know when the crisis will be over. So how long is going to last? So we 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 need to be more uh, proactive than reactive. Okay, and for longer term, so those businesses that are uh, highly affected, they still need to take time right now. And as David has discussed, they need to review their current um, current maintenance management practices the other way. Okay, and uh, and ensure that. Uh, uh, you put yourself in a better position for the future uh, compared to the competition. When the market will reopen, uh, then you'll be in a better position to perform at this time, okay, and take the opportunity that would be there. So, uh, and for other organizations that were not really affected by the demand, uh, but more affected by the new constraint on how we can operate the business with the social distancing and all that, so now you need to focus more on how you can maintain your asset in the best condition. So when you need to go back to full operation, then your asset will be performing very well, and you're going to be able to, to meet your production objective. And also uh, uh, make sure that you can really run your business effectively in those new conditions, okay? With limited amount of people on site, people working remotely, how can we manage to still be effective? the way we run the business. And again, Osenko can uh, provide support as you need for this uh, in both area and both situation. Uh, if you need any, any help, we will there, we can help you certainly in that area. Thanks. Um, here are some actually some areas to focus on, okay? Uh, we can see like all these cost, risk, uh, objectives, and uh, all the culture and organization initiatives that we can actually launch. Eric, do you want to jump on any of them? Yeah, if we look at the, the different uh, area we have uh, here on the on the screen. So again, the business plan for you, for all the businesses has changed, okay? Uh, we define a, a budget and a strategy for this year, but now with everything that happened, uh, everything has changed, okay? So uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, and you see on the screen some of the possible initiatives that we can take in, in those different areas, okay? And uh, of course, the performance of the asset needs to be improved to the best possible level that we can have, okay? Uh, so good uh, work management practices and failure elimination program is really key also to achieve this goal. Uh, so you need to make sure that your ability of asset will be maximized. And also uh, the risk, again, uh, the, we work now in a new environment. The market has changed, the environment has changed. So the risk has probably changed. So we need to do adjustments that are needed for the risk, okay? And of course the culture and the organizational need to change and to adapt is very important, okay? Maybe now in those situations, we need to use to, and to develop new tools or methodology to run our business. Okay, and again, like David talked about, the roles and responses of people need to change and be updated and revised. 
Uh, new training documentation is required to support those changes that we need to put in place. And again, coaching all the people from the organization and monitoring the people on the new tools and new methodology that needs to be implemented and all that is, is really also important. And again, in all those areas uh, with Osenko, we can help uh, find new ways to do things, develop methodology, new methodology, new tools. Uh, we have this capability of a knowledge and in house on our side to, to support you, uh, support our client in that area. Uh, actually, I thought about this, uh, with all this uh, change, you know, we very quickly changing everything. I think from all of these activities, I want to just highlight the, the innovation and digital transformation ecosystem that you need to implement in, in, your, in your organization. Nowadays, we really need to look for new ways of doing things and even why not improving our processes, our communication 100 times better. Uh, that's possible if you have the right people, the right thinking, the right methodologies. And again, coming to, to David, maybe you need to look for uh, getting some, some innovative, like different mindsets in your organization so, so you can get value of it. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, okay, again, our pillars. We really believe that similar to the way your values influence in your life, especially like taking decisions and particularly in difficult times, keeping your core maintenance activities is really good standing, especially now. Okay, so Sergio, tell me about that. What's your opinion? So look, talking about the pillars, it's very, it's very key to understand that every one of these is tied to a specific business process. So when we talk about the strategy and the maintenance of the strategy itself, we, it's all about the process of developing and implementing and deploying your maintenance of strategies. You know, that's a key process for the business and it basically lets you know what you need to do to keep your assets, you know, performing as you expect. Then, of course, that it's used and, and, and work through the work management process, you know, and in the work management process, you, you, you have a significant part that is the planning and it's basically being prepared and aware and making sure that all the resources required for doing your maintenance are there. You know, the fact elimination is a key step in any, in, 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 in any company, you know, we are finding new, you know, when changes in the operational context or by just some human error, sometimes you find effects and you need to be addressing them in a streamlined and of course, um, you know, oriented and pretty tied up manner. So it's not just leaving things that are making you lose money basically to be there. And in the execution side, it's mainly about making sure that your people are trained and skilled to execute the job. You know, we can do all the prep work, we can have the best strategies in the world, you know, but if you don't have the right people and train in the right way, you know, you won't get the outcomes from doing all that preparation and planning. So, of course, this is sort of like the way that we structure and analyze the issues that we're facing, you know, strategy management, you know, work management, effect elimination, you know, and the process of execution. So we're speaking about innovating, right? But at the same time, you know, basing on your pillars, doing your the right things like the core business, right? So strategy, planning, defect elimination, learning from the execution, understanding your failure modes, adjusting your maintenance plan, and executing definitely good training, good people, having all the resources to do it. Thank you very much, Sergio. Now we are jumping on three recommendations to improve or maintain your personal continuity. Just, just as, a, as a framework, we are going to be speaking about initiatives based on the asset optimization, asset management, maintenance. Uh, many people in the industry are speaking about the, the initiatives, you know, in, in terms of operation, you know, like uh, making secure the connection, improving the the, the um, systems and the and, and the locations for operators to to actually like be able to operate remotely. We are going to be speaking now about the other side, okay, like the maintenance side. So let's jump on the first recommendation, which is adjusting your maintenance strategy according to the new production plan and operational context. What can you tell us about that, David? Yeah, thanks, Jose. Um, I think that during period like this one, 
right? Well, it's recommended to review equipment criticality upon complete ranking exercise, right? Uh, this being said, we've discovered that some clients have 30% of assets coded A, right, for very critical equipment. While we recommend to be between five and ten percent, depending on the industry, um, so our clients have asked us to completely review their plan, work order, strategy upon that new criticality uh, coding uh, of their equipment um, and see if everything was accurate and efficient uh, or efficiently created in the system, right? Um, therefore, having a clear picture of all plan work order, right, let our clients to better, um, to better financial transparency and uh, enable them to perform way more accurate cost forecasts, right? Um, reliability specialists working from home were able to, you know, take a step back again and make sure that their initial resource plan uh, was accurate making sure that they were in line with their teammates' uh, planners. And uh, again, this step back in terms of reliability management uh, efforts help our reliability specialists to bring the clients to review their KPI again and improve their spare parts and inventory strategy, be able to, re to be ready to uh, improve mean time to repair whenever uh, they will resume their activities, right? Um, one of our clients, for instance, in the mining industry, decided to perform a maintenance care blitz for a period of eight weeks, right, Rel relying on our team to review best practices and manage their shutdown for them. In this case, for instance, we have been able to complete major work on 30% more equipment than expected and uh, managed to reduce their backlog by 45%. Uh, just again by taking that uh, same uh, good old step back and uh, looking at, at ourselves, right? Cool, um, Eric. Can you give us a, a little bit of insight of how, on how to implement this kind of initiative? No, I totally agree with uh, what has been said. So, uh, so of course, this is very important to adjust our strategies according to the failure mode changes because the way we run our business now is different failure modes that will happen will probably be different so we need to revise our strategy make sure they were they are properly aligned with the, with the needs in terms of failure modes and also all the frequencies of the maintenance task activities need to be updated adjusted to the new utilization of the asset that we're doing just to make sure we don't overspend money on some assets and uh, just make sure everything is aligned with the, with the new uh, uh, production or the new solution we're doing with our asset right now. So, uh, and of course, sometimes it's not that easy to do, uh, depending on how complex our CMMS, if it's on other base meters, it's easier because you just enter the hours and equipment have done, so the, the new PMs will generate, but when it's on frequency base, so there's a lot of work still need to adjust the frequency and all that. To make sure we, we we adjust the strategy, the maintenance program to, to the need of the assets. Thanks, Eric. Okay, hey, let's go into the let's jump on the second recommendation, which is developing an operational budget and assess various scenarios to make informed decisions. We're speaking about maintenance strategy. Now we need to know how much is it going to cost, you know, which is the cost be behind under under that. And um, some companies, some clients, I see, they actually report uh, their cost or their budget rather than actually controlling it. What do you think, Sergio, about this activity? So this is this is a key step that comes from you know any adjustment in, in your production you know and your maintenance study. So the outcome of that is going to be that you need to redo your operational budgets and your sustaining business budgets. And one of the things that we need to make sure that we are doing you know is that we base those budgets on activities. So basically we are not looking just at the historical information. Look, if you look at your budget for last year and you try to apply the same one for this year with the new situation, it will completely blow over. You know, it's not going to be accurate at all. 
So that's why by doing this work and the, the asset strategy review and basing your budgets on your actual asset strategy and the activities that you need to perform, you will be able to get accurate budgets, you know, and that means that you understand the cost well and you understand when you need to incur that cost well in order for the finance areas of the company to be able to be prepared to make sure that they have, you know, the money on the time. And that, of course, adds a lot of uh, efficiency, you know, and improvement to the actual cost for the organization. That also allows you to understand from the maintenance point of view, you know, your spares and workforce requirements. So understanding when do you need, you know, certain spares the contractors, you know, and plan for that. The lockdown is going to add new, you know, restrictions to how many people can be and do a particular job. So knowing exactly where you need to plan and how to accurately forecast that, it's it's really key. And all needs to be based on production needs, you know. So you need to be moving yourself into a world where, you know, tons, you know, operational hours and those kinds of production indicators are the ones that are driving your maintenance activity frequency. You know, so so basically all of that will allow you to have a good budget, you know, and actually be working on it to model. What if, you know, what is our worst case scenario? What if we need to stop fully, you know, and, and, and be able to make sure that you have a right custom scenario for each of the possibilities that are in the market because we are in uncertain times. And the only way that we can manage that is by just looking at different scenarios. Yes, sir, here you are speaking about a very interesting thing, you know, like a, an analysis in the worst scenario again we are speaking about managing risk this relation cost risk how much risk i am able to take you know and which is how we can convert that into dollars into money into a budget okay how important do you think eric to control nowadays uh, your budget no no it sure is it's really important and again to do that you need also to have the right tools in place to achieve this, okay? So, and, and when we talk about building right now multiple scenarios that we need to take the best decision for our business, so we need tools that are flexible and are capable of doing those analysis quickly and give us the, uh, the information, the data we need to take the right decision. So again, you will see later in the webinar, we will talk a bit about our uh, Risonate software that we have, we use within us and co. And this is a type of tool that can, can be uh, used to do the forecasting and uh, the scenario, different scenarios. And, uh, and I think it's key right now with this uh, climate of uh, uncertainty, it's really important to have the right tools for us to, to control our costs and build forecast scenarios in order for us to be proactive and again, don't react to what's going to happen later. Thank you, Eric. Now we are going to jump into the recommendation, which is like transforming data into information for decision making. Sergio, we have been speaking about this for some years now, right? Now we are working together in, in Ausenko in these issues. Can you tell me about this, the importance of, of, of this activity? It's actually like everybody is speaking, but sometimes we see that we have so much data, we are actually not really getting so, so much value. We don't have the time or we have not like filtered that data enough so that we can get value and information. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so look, I think one of the key things that everyone needs to understand becoming, you know, more aware, of, you know, in, in, in times where the technology is, you know, there and basically all the hardware and software tools exist to monitor lots of data and process a lot of data, but we need to take a step back and look at, okay, what is the actual requirement, you know? So, yeah, we have the data guide in that regard. So we have a lot of sensors and measurements that are running, you know, continuously and discreetly on, on all our plants, but, you know, we need to have tools to actually centralize and collate those data, usually in historians or software tools that basically collect all of that. But then when it comes to understanding and getting information that can be used by these new technologies like machine learning, you need to be very aware that you need to classify that data well. You know, you need to, to train a machine learning algorithm. You need to understand the basics of what is the data that you're looking at and what is the expected outcome from that data. And for that, you need to have, you know, previous occurrences of failures, for instance, to understand that. And that needs to be properly classified. 
then you need to integrate that information. So different metrics and different sensors will tell you different things about the piece of equipment, and you need to pull all of the condition-based monitoring data, the operational data, you know, inputs from the, the CMMS systems, you know, all of that must get together in a consistent way. And then, of course, you need to process all that information, you know, in a way that usually it demands a lot of, uh, you know, it's a big workload, but the technologies today allow you to do it pretty quickly, you know, that's one of the new things. And of course, from that, you can analyze the data and actually make conclusions and take decisions. So you go through this whole cycle, and I, I encourage everyone to sort of like read a little bit more, you know, we can talk about it, happy to, to have a, a longer discussion on that, but this is the key thing. Then we can understand what are the technologies, what, what is the information that we need to collect, what are the technologies to be applied, and how can we use these modern tools like machine learning, the statistical analysis, you know, and the, the Internet of Things to get the outcomes that we expect. But we need to understand that cycle, especially when it comes to, you know, the bigger issue that I would say is facing the industry is the data quality. You know, we have lots of data, but we are not really sure that the data is accurate or good. And then if you start from that, how can you get, you know, good outcomes and, and getting the predictability on your assets? Yeah, exactly. You know, it is critical the the change management. Is there is the organization really ready to to get into the machine learning and building models? As you said, it's basic to collect the right information to do it in the in the right way. Like let's say you know in the in your ERP, are you actually have you, do you have a an unstructured list of failure modes? Is your people uh, assigning the right failure mode to the to each specific situation or failure, um, yeah, people might think that they, it is just like that the difficulties around build, building the machine learning models, like the supervised or non-supervised uh, regressions. But definitely, the the key point here is like how I'm going to control to keep the quality of my data first, and then what I want to get, which are the parameters I want to measure, and then which is the result that I'm expecting, you know. All the technicality around the machine learning is not the issue at all. Like, I mean, we have people trained and capable of doing that. The issue here is defining what I want to measure, how we are going to actually implement that process so that I can get the, the best value and data possible. Okay, so let's jump now into three recommendations to improve our teams for personal productivity. This is a, this is an issue I am I'm, I'm passionate about. I love like a, how teams can get great results if they if they have a clear vision. Let's jump on into the first recommendation, which is actually becoming an expert in collaborative platforms. We all have been all of a sudden requested to work from home. It has been a challenge, for, especially for IT people, but definitely for us because it changes everything, all the methodologies, the way we communicate. Personally, I really improved so much my communication with my clients, you know. I think that there is a learning behind the, the COVID-19, which is actually, hey guys, get connected. You have been for many years disconnected from your surrounding with all your mobile phones, busy having a look to, to, to the screen, right? And COVID came, okay, I will make you understand what is important here, which is the communication with people. And uh, definitely I, I have experienced it with my family, with my teams, and definitely as well with my clients. What do you think, Eric, about this kind of platform like uh, Microsoft Teams and so on? Yeah, uh, Microsoft Teams, again, uh, within Asenco, this is the tool now we, we, we're we going to for the video conferencing and also using this tool to manage the project with the client that we have. So, again, there's a lot of uh, good things in, the, in that system. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, uh, uh, for one client, uh, we use that to manage the entire project that we had with the client. So all the documentation we needed to share between us and the different sites. Again, it was like a corporate initiative, multiple sites involved, multiple people from different sites. So we're able all to be able to be on the same team. 
and uh, and share all the documentation that we had. We had to prepare also uh, like weekly uh, update calls to the senior management uh, to give them a, a, an overview of how was going the project and all that. So we had presentation to prepare. So the the good thing with Teams is that you can have a file on on the uh, on the web directly in the program. And we can work two, three, four percent at the same time in the same document. So we can update it simultaneously. Do uh, each of us? We have to do a part for those like presentation. We had to prepare. So uh, instead of passing the file one with the other, so we were all the same time the same file. So that was really a good advantage. And also for another client, we did a complete recently a complete. Uh, assessment maintenance assessment of one organization so we had a lot of interviews done with people and again all the interviews were recorded so we put back on the teams all the recording of the interview so if you want to go back and listen again uh, and, and what uh, what we heard is it right what we you took a note and all that so we can verify back and also right now we're currently working on the report and uh, people from the client and also on our side are involved in, the, in writing the report because we did the assessment together. And so again, right now we have the report files directly there in Teams, and we go directly on our side to uh, update our parts, add information to the document. We we can uh, have the track change to be uh, uh, be in, in place and force. So then we can see who has changed, does change the document and all that, and then we can meet on regular basis to uh, to review our comments and agree uh, together. So uh, so very useful. And again, there's a lot more capability that this tool that we can do. So we're just really right now using the the first capability of the system, but there will be a lot more uh, used on the road uh, with the system. Definitely, it's a great tool that allows you to, to do many things. Actually, it allows you to construct your own project. It's like in the in the movies, you know, a director calls the super uh, superstars and and requests them to join into their vision and their project. The same way you can create teams, you know, with within your organization as well with with clients, and they work on the same platform. Uh, it, making transparent all the information actually like as you said you know work together collaborative uh, collaboratively, collaboratively and definitely manage all the information uh, which actually supported in into sharepoint it is just perfect um let's jump into the second recommendation which actually goes along and and it's aligned to the first one which is implementing agile methodologies sergio Tell me a little bit about that. I know you have been working with your teams uh, uh, around the globe in this. So can you tell us a little bit, give us some insight, for favor? Yeah, look, it's, it's all about basically being able to adjust quickly to the new outcomes. So the whole idea behind Agile methodologies is when you have projects where the requirements basically in the project change consistently. And the reality is that in most projects, that is the case. You know, you look at the outcomes that the clients are looking for, and actually, yeah, most of the things are changing, and, and, and sort of like quickly, quickly having new feedback from the client, you know, and from the stakeholders needs to address, to be addressed, you know, quickly. So it's all about reacting quickly. So it's all about, you know, aligning expectations. So basically, you having this constant communication with each stakeholder, and you are able to understand pretty well, you know, pretty soon, what are the things that you need to adjust to be able to do it. And of course, it improves the teamwork because it's it's such a sort of like a concerted effort of a team to get, you know, the work done. And everyone is aware and, and participates in the process of defining, okay, what are the tasks that we need for the next spring? That could be, you know, a couple of weeks or, or a month. But everyone is part of the decision making on why do we need to put this task in that next sprint, you know, who is going to do what, you know, which people want to choose basically according to their skill set. So, and, and look, it comes from, this is an old thing, it comes from the IT side and the software development side, but actually before that, it comes from manufacturing, you know, and the, and the idea of the quick response. So again, we are using this, we have a global project with more than 60, 60 people working on this. We are all working remotely in different locations around the globe, you know, and we all are using the new tooling to communicate and all of that, but actually it has been really good that 
it has drive you know the adjustment you know that happened a couple of months ago from being on site to being stuck at home really quickly. We were able to sort of like react and, and continue and carry on in just a couple of weeks. You know, and that's sort of like amazing from the flexibility that these kind of methodologies provides. Thanks, Sergio. And I want to ask the, the audience, are you implementing this kind of, this kind of methodology? Are you aware of it? Um, did you hear about that? Are you wondering how to implement it in the in the mining industry? Does it work? Uh, are you using like um, collaborative platforms as as team? I want to to hear from you. Hopefully, you can just comment over there, and we can comment about it afterwards. So let's let's jump into into the third and last recommendation for improving the uh, your team's productivity which is share your vision in order to inspire your team and get the best from each member. Well, can you tell us maybe about that? How, how did it go with you and your teams? Yes, um, most definitely. Uh, during those days, we, we were talking about you know, doing that uh, necessary step back, but making sure that we we have a, a clear vision of uh, what our objectives are and um, that's what I want uh, that's what I want from my team and that's what I suggest our clients to do right is to basically ask their employees to uh, to do that step back themselves and and acknowledge uh, their role and responsibilities and redefine their goals make sure that their goals are again pragmatic and uh, and aim toward the organization um, objective, right? So it's a, it's a personal effort that has to be aligned with everybody, and um, I think it's the right time to uh, force our resources to um, to take that step back and and re-acknowledge what they are there for. Yeah, nowadays we are living in in that perfect moment to to a leader to arise, right? So definitely sharing your clear vision and and and, and defining objectives and and say let's say okay guys we are going that way. Nowadays with all this uncertainty, it is key to 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 coach and 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 make of your your team like a solid. A machine of working together with a mission, with a purpose. The purpose is the why. Why we are doing things. Why we are here in this webinar, sharing with with uh, with our clients. You know, we want to add value. We want to really like uh, help others. We are serving. You know, and 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 the team needs to understand that. You know, so applying all the technical uh, things that we spoke before about uh, like agile methodologies uh, using this kind of platforms and so on it is perfect however if you don't have your team motivated and really actually like being next to them mentoring them making them better professional eventually your service is a product okay it's an indirect result of how good and strong is your team so definitely, like a, a spending time developing your team, it is key nowadays more than ever. So we are going to very quickly jump on some of the of our services, with those pillars. I, I'm going to actually leave it with Eric, who is our uh, North American manager. Can you tell us a little bit about services? Yeah, again, uh, you see there are some of the pillars uh, that we have in, on our side. But again, when I look uh, currently with the situation, uh, the type of services we can still offer to our clients. So, so again, we can continue to give uh, strategic support. Uh, if again, our charts need to be reviewed, role and responsibilities of people maybe need to change, the objective have changed, the, the, the action plan we need to put in place that we have developed probably last year for this year are maybe obsolete or part of it is obsolete, so it needs to be renewed. So we can we can support uh, our client doing this. Uh, also, any cost analysis, budget forecasting, support that might be needed. That's that's area also where we can help. Uh, again, doing maintenance and risk assessment. This is something that's possible. We've done it recently with the client. 
having remote interview with people, asking data prior to the interview, uh, to, to again, to, to uh, align some questions also based on data, and then write the report. So, so we're able to do a lot of this uh, remotely, uh, doing also offering training and coaching. So we're going to organize, again, web sessions for trainings and do one-on-one -on -one coaching of people or team coaching. That's all things that we can continue to do. Uh, even asset and decret assessment, again, if we get the information time on, on the client side to provide a little more of information, like pictures or videos, stuff like that, but there's a lot of stuff we can analyze remotely and give feedback to the client after that, and maybe limit the visit uh, that are required to do to do the work. Uh, business processes, changes, uh, adapt, uh, adaptation you need to do to your processes, we can help in that. Uh, analyze all your remote data that you have in the system. So many companies have a lot of data in their system and nobody's having really the time to look at the data, what's in there. And uh, again, this is area where we can do those analysis for our client. Uh, what about your CMMS? Always configure your CMMS. So apparently Eddie is having some internet troubles and um, we will continue, okay? So we do have a software, we spoke about it before. Basically what we can do with this software is actually analyzing uh, the criticality of our assets, uh, defining the maintenance strategy like a uh, get ready of all, all of our um, ERP uploads so that we can do it in, in a very automatic way and fast and definitely controlling your costs. We have been speaking about controlling your cost. This tool, Riosonate, actually was developed by Osenko uh, initially as a, as, a, as a trial, as, as a way of actually adding value to our services to, to have a, a really good practical tool that uh, gives to our consultants a better position to to manage uh, data and, uh, and serve our clients. Nowadays, he, 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 we are selling the, the software as well. If you have any question about it, we will be really happy to make any 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 showcase or, or maybe a trial in your company. And that's it. Now we are going to leave exactly 10 minutes for some questions and we will be happy to answer. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, David, Sergio. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to share this moment with you. Now we are opening this space for um, our audience to just comment, you know, um, some questions that they might have for, for, for the panelists. Actually, we do have here now one. So, Soel Mardine, is there an opportunity to integrate the Ausenkos TLS simulation platform for this purpose. I guess he's referring to the to applying machine learning. Eric, can you go for that? Are you back? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, again, yes, of course, we, we can give support in that area. And again, when we talk about simulation, we have also a Another group of Asenko that can help us also on, in that area, and uh, and yes, uh, this is all uh, things we can uh, support and help in that area. As we speak, we are in Asenko developing here a, a team, like well, there is a team focused on on machine learning, uh, and definitely it is in the scope to e implement these studies into the DNL simulation platform. I don't know if Sohail uh, already used uh, the software. Uh, in any case, I'm inviting you to, to contact me or any of the panelists and uh, we can uh, continue speaking about that. Okay, next question. We have here David, another David, speaking about the recent uh, results that you get, David, which was a 40% reduction in the in the um, downtime.
Can you repeat that question, Jose, again? Yeah, the, the reduction that you uh, had in the downtime, no, actually, no, no the back, the back, actually, the back Correct. reduction, yeah, it was. Correct. So how did you get that? Well, uh, it was in the mining industry. One of our clients had uh, somewhere over 60,000 hours of backlog, right? And um, they wanted to do like a two months maintenance care blitz. Uh, that was aiming towards that, you know, backlog reduction, obviously. So what, what we did is first we, we did a massive export of uh, all work orders that were in the database and uh, through different filters and sorts, right? At first, we identified the certain quantity of work orders that were uh, no longer meant to be in uh, the system. And after that, what we did is we managed um, major work like if it was a project, right? Uh, by re-estimating uh, the, the hours on the work orders, making sure that we were uh, regrouping the work orders like in NMS project, making sure that we were tackling all those work orders in the right order, uh, assigning the right resources on the right uh, jobs. And uh, after eight weeks, as I said, uh, we, we reduced the, the, the backlog by 40% just by making sure that we were putting emphasis on the coordination, right? Making sure that we have parts in a timely fashion, that we have parts for the right steps, uh, again, in the right order. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we, we discovered that uh, we were able to obtain a leverage of uh, between 25 and 30% uh, uh, average uh, uh, on those jobs. Uh, for instance, a job that was estimated for a thousand hour was uh, was taking us uh, seven hundred uh, hours. So the client, uh, the client was, uh, you know, asked uh, my team and I to uh, to be on site, the four of us. And uh, again, we managed work like if it was a project. And at the end of the day. This would be my uh, my main my main advice. Okay, so next question, John Markwell, how do you ensure the remote assessment integrity, asset integrity assessment effectiveness? I guess this is for you, Eric. How can you ensure the effectiveness of your remote assessment, asset integrity assessment? Yeah, so so again, of course, we, we're going to ask the client to take uh, any measure, picture, video that we need. We'll do a first pass on this, and then if we feel that there's more picture, more precise uh, spot area of the equipment of that that needs to be, uh, uh, again, more detailed, so we're going to request additional uh, uh, pictures, videos to be taken and all that. And, and again, it, we try just to keep like maybe a final visit on site just to validate to make sure we didn't forget any important aspects but uh, a lot of this can be done uh, with with the quality quality of the camera we have right now and the videos we can have so uh, so we can do some of those analysis uh, remotely a big part of it so uh, and just keeping a minimum for validation at the end Thanks, Eric. We have here Annie asking, how long would you take to make a maintenance strategy review? Okay, so you can go with that. Hey, look, it depends on the, the scale that you want to do it. We can sort of like very quickly streamline the process. We have the tools and we have a lot of sort of like library knowledge from different assets. So if we're talking about just like, um, you know, a regular asset, let's say a crusher, you know, we probably can take a month to do a thorough review of the maintenance strategy. So like, that's kind of like the time frame for like something like a crusher. Of course, if we're talking about smaller pieces of equipment, yeah, you're talking, you know, weeks. And of course, there are sort of like economies of scale when you can do a lot of workshopping up front and, and prepare the information, you can tackle, let's say, 
as an example, a concentrator plant, and we need a full concentrator plant basically in six months with three people. So, yeah, it depends. It depends on the level of detail that the client requires, but usually we, we can do it pretty quickly. Like I said, we have a lot of knowledge and information previously acquired from other projects. You know, we have a lot of assets already developed for the mining industry. So it's just about adjusting them and making sure that they are tailored to the particular operational context. But again, it, it's, um, it's a quick and streamlined process. Okay. And I think we have still space for the last question. Carlos Trujillo is asking, in COVID time, there are many challenges to approach, but related with innovation in data management and technology, what could be the principal keys to keep in mind related with asset management to optimize topics like such as work management? And you go with that, Sergio? Look, I'll try. I think it's a it's a it's a big question to be honest. But look, when it comes to that, what I find all the time is that you know we we feel ourselves and and David spoke about this previously. You know, we feel ourselves with KPIs without really having good understanding of what those KPIs are being used for or what is their impact on you know your your business performance. And and what that means is that look. It, organizations collect a lot of information. They do it on the sort of like operational space, but also on the work management side. So you implement KPIs like, you know, plan, schedule, work, you know, your adherence to your schedule, you know, your amount of backlog, the different methods. Most of the work management ones tend to come from the CMMS itself because it's what tracks everything that is happening, you know, related to work. Uh, and the things that you can integrate with that are usually in the line of, you know, measurement points. So basically information that comes from the operation that needs to drive certain, certain indicators. But again, work management is a tricky one because it's more like a process. It's not, you know, it's like a business process more than, you know, a performance of an asset. So, yeah, I think it's an interesting uh, opportunity. And honestly, I know that the team in Osenko is working on those issues right now. Okay, thank you very much. So it's time to give an end to this conversation. Thank you very much, Eric, David, Sergio, for your time. It has been a pleasure to be with you. This has been uh, the first asset optimization webinar. Uh, we are waiting for more. So, okay, feel free to all the audience to contact us through LinkedIn, also follow I will send call LinkedIn as well to uh, to get the the last news from from our webinars and, and and some more. Thank you very much. We are closing the conversation now. Okay, take care. Good luck and see you around. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.